Manning the Inside Corner on this Thursday, Joel Sherman, usually around this time of year, we're talking about jobs lost. Good morning, by the way. Not the case in Queens. David Stearns, the new president of baseball operations for the Mets. He was pointed, Joel, as the guy. We knew this was coming. We knew he was the architect of those Milwaukee Brewers teams making the playoffs 18 to 21. What is his first order of business and how do you like the fit? Uh, I think it's a good fit. Uh, you know, this has been obvious for a while. It's obvious that Thursday follows Wednesday. Uh, yes. You know, Steve Cohn, three years ago, began trying to hire this job. Uh, he found it very frustrating. You know, in his day job, he could talk to somebody under contract to another business and say, I'm willing to give you more money. I really like you. Would you come here? You can't do that in baseball with a contract. So there was that. There were people, I think, who were concerned about his reputation coming to work here or work in New York. So he kept getting shut down. And I think after a while he said, I don't want to just hire this job. I want to make sure when I do it, and it took him three years, I get the right guy. Why is David Stearns the right guy in his mind? Young, 38. He has some passion for the franchise. He grew up Upper East Side of Manhattan as a Met fan. He was in the ballpark when Mike Piazza hits the home run off of Steve Carsey in the first game back after 9-11. So he worked as an intern in the organization, has proved himself without much of a budget in Milwaukee. The team made the playoffs four years in a row from 2018 to 2011. By the way, going back to when they were the Seattle Pilots, they made the playoffs four times in their entire history until David Stearns took over. He's great at finding talent on the margin. He's known as a guy with a very high IQ and what's called an EQ. He gets along with people. Somebody, I can't tell you how many times in the last few weeks when I ask, people will say, he always is the smartest guy in the room, but doesn't make you feel that's that That's important. Way. You know? And so he knows how to find uh, uh, talent on the margin. He's now going to have the budget to do more than that. It's a tough job, Lauren. So what's like, first? Well, I think he's got to decide about uh, Buck, Showalter. Buck Showalter. I think manager comes first. Buck has one year left on his contract. Does he want to... You know, say, hey, I got so much to do here. I'm going to leave the veteran manager in charge. I'll observe it for a year, see if I like it, make a decision. Or does he feel, no, that's an important job? You mentioned Pete Alonso. Coincidentally, the team they were closest to trading to at the deadline was the Brewers. Mm -hmm. So if those talks pick up again, no one's going to know the Brewer organization like David Stearns if he wants to do that. That's the kind of trade he would make as a brewer, because he wouldn't allow that guy to get to free agency and get to nothing. He now has Steve Cohn's money, so he can make a different decision. Does he want to keep him? So, and I think this offseason, he's got to run two parallel tracks, which are, well, are difficult. He doesn't want to punt on 2024, so he's going to have to try to find one- and two-year contracts that make the Mets at least an 88 kind of win projection for next year while continuing to build the farm system so that in 2025 forward, they could do... We actually, the Brewers made the playoffs four years in a row. You know something the Mets have never done since 1962? That? They've never made it three years in mm. a row. So that's what Steve Cohn brought him in for. Can he bring sustainable contention stability, professionalism to the group. Remember when I said, can you rebuild in New York? And you said, what, the Knicks? <laughs> of course you could rebuild in New York. It's a stupid trope <laughs> that people answer. who fail, the people who fail here go, well, you know, time. I failed because I couldn't rebuild. You've been rebuilding for 20 years. You're just not calling it that. Your team stinks. Okay. Mets went in on pitching this offseason. This offseason is going to be fun. And pitching, we know this, Joel, is always at the forefront. If we look at the list of free agents starting pitching, and I think if we look at it now, it looks different than if we were to look at it in April. What stands out? I think it looks different, Lauren, than if you would have looked at it in July. Okay. Just think about what's happened in the second half. We found out that Shohei Otani, who was going to – he's still the number one free agent because of how he hits. But he's not going to pitch in at least 2024. Um, Julio Urias is suspended. We don't know what his status is moving forward. He's a difficult sign. He might not even be eligible to be, be signed. Aaron Nola was probably third on that list. Nola had a shaky first half. His ERA is over five. You know the back the of the baseball card, though, for him. But the, my worry with him would be what I love about him uh, is kind of like what I would say I loved about Sandy Alcantara. He takes the ball and he goes out there yes, and he, he fights and fights. But at some point, this is a tough art. Your art, like, has he pitched a lot and have we seen the best of him? It's a five ERA in the second half. Love the makeup, love the pitcher. He, but is he a gamble? Luis Severino was somebody even off the bad year somebody was going to gamble on. Yet another injury, the oblique. 
Guys like Jack Flaherty and Lucas Giolito, they've gotten traded into uh, pennant races, in Giolito's case, a second time, picked up on waivers. They haven't pitched well. This is not a market you want to be in. So what's the moral of the story? Draft and develop? You, I mean, everyone tries to do that. It's not as easy as, right? So again, there's That's a lot of goal. cautionary tales. Again, think about just since the All-Star break. Steven Strasburg, whether he's retiring or not, what he makes, six, eight starts on a $245 million contract. Matt Scherzer just went down. That was at the, the parade after the, the, he the won two, it all. The two, the two, right. But then they gave him $245 million after the parade, Lauren. Why? You know, that, that, that counts. I live in the positive. By the way, the two biggest free agents signed pitchers last offseason. Jacob DeGrom, six starts. Carlos Rodon, either hurt or bad this, this year. So I think you better be teams like the Cleveland Guardians, Seattle Mariners, you're developing your own. You don't need to go in this market. Or doing something, I think the Yankees are doing a smart thing. They're taking someone like Michael King, who has a bullpen guy, who has a lot of pitches. Anybody who's a non-contender right now, who isn't experimenting with a relief pitcher with multiple pitches, like the Mets didn't do it with Seth Lugo. It turns out Seth Lugo's a starting pitcher. You know, he's done it for San Diego. Everyone should be experimenting right now if you could experiment.